हेलो 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 इज इट ऑडिबल हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर हेलो Hello. Hello, yes sir. Can you hear uh, me? Can you hear? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Okay, okay, fine. It's audible for me too. So it's audible, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I can switch off my video, right? Uh, no, sir. Uh, huh? You can start sir, screen sharing, sir. Okay. it's disabled host disabled participant screen sharing sir you are going to start chapter 10 sir no it, it seems like you have disabled my screen sharing option oh, oh, okay, Change the settings, sir. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Can you share the screen now, sir? Yeah. Now I can. So now you can see the screen, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. I can see okay. the screen. Sir. Yes, A very happy morning to all of you present here. Waiting has ended, and you are finally among us. At last, you are with us. Time has arrived. On behalf of Marudar Kesri Jain College for the many. Vanyambadi I welcome you all to this third session of two days international webinar on recent advances in life science organized by PG and research department of biotechnology and biochemistry prayer changes everything our prayers do make a difference let us now start the session with prayer song
A glad welcome we bring to you this morning, fulfilled with desires, hopes, and dreams we all share. I'm very delighted to offer you the most hospitable welcome we can. It gives me an immense pleasure to invite energetic and spirited Dr. M. Gomati, ma'am, Head Department of Biotechnology, to deliver the welcome address. Please, ma'am. Pleasant morning to all. On behalf of Maruder Kesri Jain College for Women, I welcome you all for this international webinar on recent advances in life science. On behalf of PG and Research Department of Biotechnology and Biochemistry, I feel honored in welcoming our resource person of today's session, Dr. Nyanendra Sanmuham, Assistant Professor, Microbial Genomics Lab, Department of Biotechnology, Egnam University, South Korea. Welcome you, sir. I extend my hearty welcome to our secretary, Swissi, Likmichan, Zijain, and other trust members in Absentia. It's my privilege to welcome our beloved principal, Dr. T. Bala Subramanian. Welcome you, sir. I extend my warm welcome to our vice principal, Dr. M. Inbavalli, ma'am. Welcome you, ma'am. We are fortunate to have the supporting professors and colleague participants from various institutions your strong support and active participation will make this international webinar a grand success. Welcome you all. I extend my heartfelt welcome to PRO Madam and Mrs. R. Malarkudi, Head Department of Biochemistry and faculties of both Biotechnology and Biochemistry Department. Welcome you all. Once again, I welcome you all for this international webinar on recent advances in life science. Thank you so much, ma'am. May you be proud of the work you do, the person you are, and the difference you make. Now I request Ms. K. Munishwari, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, to give a brief description of Dr. T. Nanindra Shanmogan, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Yenam University, Gyeongsan, South Korea. Please, ma'am. Good morning to all. I am very happy to introduce our resource person, Dr. T. Nyanendra Shanmugan. Sir, it is Doctor of Philosophy in Bioinformatics, Bharatiya University, Coimbatore in year of 2014. Sir completed his Master of Philosophy in Biotechnology at Bharatiya University in year of 2004 to 2005. 
He completed his Master of Science in Bioinformatics at Wales College of Science, University of Madras in April 2004. Sap completed his Bachelor of Science in Microbiology, Zoology, Chemistry at PVKM Government Degree College, Tittur, SV University, Tirupati, 2002. He completed his profession program on protein modeling and rational drug designing at BioCampus, a unit of GVK Bio, Hyderabad in 2006. He has certified, he has received a certificate in drug designing softwares like Series 2, Insight 2, Catalyst from Aglaris USA, and also received certificate in rational drug designing from GVK Bio, Hyderabad. SAC has honored us Diploma in Network Computing from NIIT Chittur. Professional experience, SAC worked as a lecturer in Department of Bioinformatics at Vyagananda College of Arts and Science, Tiruchangur, Namakal from 2004 to 2009. He worked as a head department of Bioinformatics at Vyagananda College of Arts and Science, Tiruchangur, Namakal from 2009 to 2012. Sir worked as an assistant professor and joint director for research in the Department of Biotechnology at Selvam Arts and Science College, Namakal from 2012 to 2013. He worked as a training consultant, bioinformatics division, origin biosolution in Salem from 2013 to 2014. Sir worked as a research associate at Center for Research Development in Mahendra Engineering College and visiting faculty as assistant professor Department of Biotechnology, Mahendra Arts and Science College, Namakal from 2014 to 2016. Sat served as a post-doctoral research scientist under the supervision of Pro Professor Jim Khayam Jion at Microbial Genomic Laboratory, Department of Biotechnology, Ingham University, South Korea from 2016 to 2018. Publication, Sat has published nearly 25 papers in SCI and SCIE. He said he expertise in handling many bioinformatics software tools like molecular docking tools, virtual screening tools, modeling tools, sequence analysis tools, operating system, programming, and databases. Invited talks, SAR has invited chief guests in nearly 19 colleges, and he organized many seminars, conferences, and workshops. SAR currently working as a assistant professor as international research professor in Microbial Genomics Laboratory, Department of Biotechnology, Engdom University, South Korea. We are very happy to welcome such as eminent person for our today's session. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, without any delay, it's time to invite our resource person to kindly take over the session. Please, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And it's been my pleasure to be here to share my opinion on metagenomics. So here I'm going to present you a topic of metagenomics. So it's an emerging field where most of the researchers has been working on to understand and host microbe interaction. So we know that as we are an human beings and we are even living beings, which has been occupied on this earth, apart from an human beings, we have many other species like plants and animals. So all the, the survival of these animals or any living being has been concerned, has been mainly concerned with that. Uh, it's having a relationship with the microorganisms. So when we look into that, in, in, fact of, in fact, if you can say that every human being's function is dependent upon and microorganisms. So just we want to know that how this microorganisms has been helping us to survive and how we have been uh, functioning properly. So here we are going to study what are all the uh, microorganisms which has been present in the body or in our surroundings and how it has been helping the host to be an uh, to exist in of a uh, normal way or to cause some disease. So if the interaction has been and beneficial, then we are going to have an uh, positive effects. And if it is going to have a negative effects, then we are going to call it as of an pathogen. So we need to understand how this pathogen and my, uh, this host and microbe has been interacting with each other. 
So that concept is called as of an meta genomics. So here we are going to know about how many organisms has been present in our body. So what is the role of each and every bacteria? So simply we can say that we know that we are having an probiotics. So these probiotics are called as of an beneficial organisms. So just delineating an organisms which has been present in the body and we are going to delineate that which has been helpful which are the beneficial so those will be considered as often probiotic so let's look into um, let's come for a topic so my screen sharing option is disabled yeah okay thank you so so this is our concept of today's session will be on metagenomics. So it's an approach to understand and host microbe interactions. So in, in general, when we are calling it as of a topic of microbiology, we always deals with an clinical microbiology, especially by saying that what are the microorganisms which causes and disease and the main purpose of this uh, clinical microbiology is to understand so what is the role of each and every bacteria and how they have been causing an disease to an host? And we are just, we are going to find out what are the drugs which will be beneficial in order to have its effect on these microorganisms. So based upon that, when we come for an uh, data which has been seen in the functional organisms, so we divide that into N3 categories like genes, RNAs, proteins, and metabolites. So we know that the study of genes are called as of an genomes and RNA will be called as of an transcriptome and proteins will be called as of an proteome and metabolites will be called as of an metabolome. So if you look into the data, so we know that in an human organisms, it has been said to be that we have around 25,000 to 300,000 genes. So the study of whole composition of those genes is called as of an genomes. And next one will be an study of whole RNA composition will be called as of an transcriptome and study of whole proteins will be called as of an proteome and study of whole metabolites will be called as of an metabolome. So based upon this, we can say that we have and lots of data. So we need to analyze what is the each and every component of the data and that's called as of an omics. Study of those whole composition of the data will be called as of an omics. So and that when we are going to deal that with a microorganism level, then it's called as of a computational microbiology. So here, the main concept of this computational microbiology or metagenomics is to say that we know that when we try to uh, culture the bacteria, we can able to culture only 1% of bacteria, total bacterial population. So 99% of bacterial populations are unculturable. So we are going to use a method called as of a 16S RNA gene sequencing. So where we can completely, 99% uh, of the uncultured bacteria can also be detected from a specific uh, community. So we know that this 16S RNA gene will be of 1500 base pairs. So this technique will be called as of a metagenomics. So where we are going to sequence a whole genome of each and every organism. If we decide to do that, we can go for a whole genome uh, sequencing and this 16S RNA gene sequencing will be called as of an OTUs. Those are called as of an operational taxonomic units and they have been characterized for their gene expression. So altogether this we can call it as of an computational microbiology. So when we, before the introduction of this term metagenomics, we know that microbiology has been uh, used for identification of an bacteria and which we, uh, we can able to my uh, culture only less than 1% of microbes and 99% of bacteria are seen to be unknown. So we are going to use a technique of sequencing technologies to identify what are all the bacteria or what are all the organisms, microorganisms, which has been present in the surrounding or from specific samples. So then we can culture whatever the microbes which we need, specifically knowing, and we can design and culturable media which can be used for growing and specific bacteria. So in that we need to understand that the three different terms like microbiota, it means that what are the collection of microorganism communities which has been seen in a particular habitat. And next one is of a microbiome, the study of whole genome of those microorganisms. 
and next one is of an human microbiome so the microorganisms associated with an human will be called as of an human microbiome so altogether this is the picture which explains that what is an microbiome so here we are going to call it as of an metagenomics so whole genome shotgun sequencing is a technique which is which will help us to delineate the microbiome of a specific organism so in this microbiome again if you can look into that we have and different classes of an interkingdoms so like bacteria archaea fungi and viruses so we if you want to identify what are all the bacteria and archaea which has been present in a specific community or in a specific habitat so we are going to use an 16s rrna sequencing and for fungi we are going to use an 18s rrna sequencing so one can by one one can identify what are all the bacteria or archaea present in a specific habitat we can use an 16s rrna sequencing so i guess we all know that how we are using an 16s rrna sequencing so usually what we do we'll take in certain samples from a specific area and then we are going to use an uh, universal primers to amplify and specific bacteria isolate so once that bacteria isolate has been uh, isolated so then we are going to send it for an 16s sequencing and then we are going to get an 16s rna sequencing and we do some uh, blast search and we are going to say that so this is the bacteria which belongs to specific genera so this is what we are doing so instead of that i just i want to know what are all the bacteria which has been present in the specific habitat so we are going to use an metagenomic approach which will amplify almost all the bacteria from an specific sample instead of one one bacteria we are going to collectively isolate all the bacteria we are going to collectively sequence all the bacteria and then we are going to study that what to which genera each and every bacteria or archaea belongs or even fungi if you are going for fungi we are going to use an 18s rna sequencing that's called as of an its sequencing so when we come for an human microbiome so here is an example of an human microbiome so it says that the total microbes and their genomes and their environmental interactions on an human organism so if you are going to say that i am going to study an human microbiome it deals with what are all the total microorganisms which has been surrounding in the body and what is the location of what is the bacterial composition of each and every location say for an example if you want to say that uh, what is the composition of microorganisms present in my uh, near my nose so we can say that this is a microbial a microbiota which has been seen at a specific region confined to a specific region so we all know that so human body is having an various organs so each and every organ has been protected by a certain type of microorganisms so the same bacteria cannot be seen in other region so we can say that we are going to define so what is the microbial community which has been seen at specific regions and that's called as of an human microbiome so this can also be called as of an other genome of an human so especially it refers to an gut microbiome so which makes the man to be healthy or which this is the genomes bacterial genomes which will decide whether an individual should be an healthy or should be an diseased one so it has been published in nature by saying that it's an our other genome so your gut microorganism will decide that whether a person should be an healthy or he should be uh, to prone to certain diseases so this is the numbers of an human microbiome so we can say that we have an uh, 10 to 100 trillion uh, microbial populations that's of almost 10x of our human genome so in our human genome we are having only 22000 cells so if uh, the 10 power, uh, 10x of this will be you are going to study an 100 to 10 to 100 trillion microbial cells so it says that if you are going to look into the genome of an human being if you are going to compare the genome of two individuals it will be only it will be almost 99.9% similar whereas if you are going to compare the microbiome of two individuals it will be 80 to 90% only similar so we can say that 10 to 20% of variation will be seen from individual to individual in terms of their microbiome composition so we want to know that based upon this we we you can we can say that if someone is been uh, playing in some kind of soil they will be easily prone to some diseases and the same in the same place if someone has been playing they are they will be very healthy so it's all because of the microbiome which has been seen or which has been inhabited in their body so based on that we one can say that these are the microorganisms which is protecting an specific individual 
So this is what we are going to study the interaction. So what is the interaction between the host and these microbes, which has been helping the, the host to be fit. So if you take an, uh, the human body in which we are going to have and the large microbial composition has been seen in this uh, digestive system, like stomach, duodenum, uh, jejunum, aluminum and ilium and uh, colon. So these are the various regions where already the microbial composition has been defined, like the based upon the pH and based upon the colony forming units. So we can see that, so these are the predominant bacterial uh, genera which has been occupied in this stomach. So you can see that lactobacillus, streptococcus, staphylococcus and enterobacteriaceae. So these are the beneficial organisms which has been seen in the stomach. So what does it say? If the composition of this species, uh, if this the composition of this genera like lactobacillus, staphylococcus, streptococcus and enterobacteriaceae has been changed, it might be a reducing, the composition of those can be reduced or it can be increased. So it will show an effect on the health of a human being. Same way, diogenum. So these are the composition of an microbial comp uh, uh, microbiota. So like that, we have an various compositions of various genera, which has been seen in the gut microbiome. So this, the organization or the composition of this microbiota has been decided by many factors. So like host genetics. So this genetic system will, uh, will decide which bacteria should be inhabited in a human system and based upon our exercise habitats, stress level, well, what are the antibiotics which you are using and based upon your age and uh, gastric mobility, like increase in pH in your acidity stomach and what are the antimicrobial peptides which we are using and gastric secretions and diet. So diet is the one which mainly decides what kind of bacterial population should be seen inside the body and the mode of delivery, whether it's of a normal delivery or it's of a C-session delivery and geographical location. So from place to place. So these are all the factors which has been deciding the composition of microbial composition of a human being. So once we can study this, the microbial composition of a human, even we can change the condition of a human being. Say, say for an example, if and uh, we are going to compare the microbial composition of a specific individual at a in a normal condition and then stress condition. So we can know that, so what bacterial population has been decreased or which has been increased in a stress condition. So once we can delineate all this data, even we can easily provide this bacterial sources as often drugs to a specific individual to treat and specific diseases. So this is what now the generation has been going on by giving an probiotics to improve the health of a specific individual. So if you look into this picture, it, will, it, it says that how the bacterial uh, population has been affecting an individual. So if you look here, it's of a good bacteria. So these are the bacterial species, which has been beneficial for an, your host. And whereas we have a specific bacteria, which uh, causes and which are called as of a problematic. So we can simply call it as of a pathogenic bacteria, which causes, which destroys the cells in a human organism. So based upon the delivery and when, when the, a baby is being seen inside and mother's womb. So it is going to decide that once it has been out, it is going to decide what kind of bacterial population should be seen in the body. So if that specific individual attains and good bacteria, so he remains healthy. And if he attains and bad bacteria, so it can lead to a different kind of diseases like easily prone to some infections or diabetes, IBS. So these are all various diseases which has been caused when the uh, baby, when the individual uh, captures a bad bacteria. So this bacteria will decide that whether an individual should be healthy or it will be a disease condition. So this is an, um, a bacterial classification seen at an different ages of the individual. So here it says that when the baby has been born, it has been highly enriched with an enterobacteria C. So it says that only one bacterial population has been seen here. Only one community, uh, only one uh, genera has been seen here. Family, enterobacteria C family has been seen here. So in when the baby has been born, we are having only enterobacteria C. Now you can see here when the baby grows for an one month, so there will be an additional bacterial family. So we can see that there is an increase in the bacterial family. So where it says that we have an Basido, a Basido uh, bacteria C family has been increasing 
and later stages at the sixth month, the dynamics has been changing. So at uh, age of two to three years. So this graph says that when the baby has been born, the bacterial diversity is very less. As soon as he, as he grows on, the bacterial diversity get, keeps on increasing. So it means that the number of bacterial family is getting increased. So it means that the baby is getting adapted to and different environmental conditions. So the various bacteria has been has been adjusting within various bacteria populations, so which will help him to survive for an, uh, different conditions. And you can see here, inter-individual variability has been decreasing. So what does it mean is when we see here, so enterobacteria at the age of birth, we can see here the entero composition of enterobacteria is, is more because only one bacterial family has been seen here. So when we come to an, at the age of two to three years, the enterobacteria level has been decreased. So it means that it needs and maybe one bacteria will be an antagonistic to an another. So like that, there will be in various kinds of interactions and which helps the bacteria to exist, to coexist with each other. So it's called as of a co-occurrence pattern survivability. So these are the various kind of studies which we are going to, which one can perform to understand the host microbe interactions. So now based upon the age, so one can say that what are, what are the different kinds of an, the conditions which will affect the bacterial composition. So if you take an unborn baby, there is uh, no composition. So no influence of the bacteria, uh, no influence on microbial population. So when a baby has been born, so it has been based upon in three different aspects like breastfeed, formula feed and solid food. So by using uh, it says that what is the bacterial composition which has been seen at a different levels when it has been growing so when we take it in a dna level and when we take it at a 16s rrna level we are going to study that what is the bacterial composition so when the baby grows into a toddler so here again we have in three different conditions so it says that antibiotic treatment so when the antibiotics has been given what is the bacterial composition has been seen here so when the baby is seems to be healthy, so what is the bacterial composition? And when uh, the malnutrition occurs, what is the bacterial population? So here you can see here, when the baby is seems to be healthy, there is a small composition of proteobacteria, whereas when the nutrition is not being seen, the nutrition level has been decreased. We can see here there is, there is large growth in proteobacteria. So one can uh, decrease the proteobacteria level so that again the person can become can become an healthy individual same way when we grow up an, an adult we have an again two stages like here just one a case is being given like obesity and healthy individual so it says which it, it will decide that so if an individual is very healthy so it decides so this is the this is the bacterial composition which makes the person to be healthy and these are the bacterial composition which makes to be an obese and at an elderly stage, so again, we have N2 criteria like the number of bacterial population will be varying. And this is a picture which explains that what are the microbial population which has been seen at specific parts of the body. So here we can call, we can categorize like the study of this microbial popula my, uh, microbiome can be categorized like oral microbiome, studying what is a oral composite, what is a microbial composition at an, in an uh, mouth. So which diseases has been seen and what kind of an uh, bacterial population has been uh, seen here. So this is the bacterial composition and this is a pie chart which explains the composition of each and every bacteria. And next one is of an placenta microbiome. So which decides, which is the factor of uh, preterm birth, uh, choreomniotis and uh, torch infections. So based up, these are the uh, factors which it decides the microbial composition in a placenta and vagina microbiome. So these are the diseases which it decides what should be the microbiome. And these are the factors which it decides and skin microbiome and gut microbiome has been dependent upon obesity, metabolic syndromes, diabetes, so on, so on. So this is the study of an uh, oral microbiome or placenta microbiome, various aspects of studying and microbiome. And you can see here that so when someone is following a non-western diet like good organic foods so the gut microbiota the increase in basido 
uh, bifidobacteria can be seen, bacteroids increase can be seen, provetola uh, can be seen, and firmicutes level will be decreased. And side chain fatty acids composition can be increased, so which improves the mood. So often person. So uh, same when they are taking an Western diet, you can see here there is a decrease in these beneficial bacteria and increase in firmicutes. So which uh, when this bacteria has been seen rich, there will be more number of side chain fatty acids. Whereas when this bacteria has been seen less in number, there will be less in side chain fatty acid composition so that the food digestion will, will not be so quickly it can be done so that the people get obese by using this Western diets and which is having a direct uh, influence on uh, anxiety and uh, depression. So mood levels will be changing. So here you can see here that the person who is eating only one kind of Western diet will be seen only in one kind of bacterial population, whereas the one who eats and different kinds of an organic or non-Western diet will be rich with an, an a bacterial diversity so that this bacterial diversity will have perform and various kinds of an actions like digestion by, by improving the digestion and all so that the person can stay healthy. So these human microbes are just like an identity of a human being for saying whether he is an healthy or not. And if you look into an, this picture, it says that our human body is always surrounded with a microbiome. Wherever we go, we have uh, we have been surrounded with an microbiomes, mic uh, microorganisms. And these microorganisms are having in various kinds of functions, especially the gut microbiome, gut microbiota. So like uh, nervous system modifications, they have a nervous system modifications and breakdown of food compounds, pathogen resistance, protection against an epithelial injury, bone mass density modulation, promotion of fat storage, promotion of angiogenesis, immune system stimulation, and biosynthesis of vitamins and metabolism of therapeutic. So it says that gut microbiota is very, very important. Once if you have a good enough bacterial population in your gut, then you can say that this specific individual is very healthy. So even we can regain an bacterial population to stay healthy and fit. So if we are having an St uh, fat storage. So it means that we have a certain kind of bacteria which has been promoting an fat storage. Or if you have an uh, less fat storage, then we can say that we have a specific kind of bacteria which is decreasing the fat storage. So based upon an individual's stat health status, one can study that or one can say that these are the bacterial population which is essential to keep fit or to, uh, to promote the health of a specific individual. So this is the microbiome study which decides that composition of an microbiome. So when we are doing when when we perform an microbiome research, we are going to check out that what is a variation of microorganisms seen at different organs. Say for an example, so different microbiome colonizing different body areas. So this is a PCO plot which explains that so when we look at an x-axis it says that there is a 13% variation when we look at this y-axis, it says that we have only 4.4% variation in the bacterial distribution. So he, here it says that we have a specific group of bacteria which has been seen in gastrointestinal. So it says that the gastrointestinal bacterial population is very different when compared to your oral or urogenital or skin and nasal. Whereas when you compare the nasal and skin microbial distribution, we can see that there is an almost overlap. So it says that the nasal microbial, the nose microbial population and skin microbial population are almost mixed together. And as a urogenital is also mixing up with skin microbial population. Whereas if you can look into the oral and gastrointestinal, they're very different from each other. So it says that a specific group of bacteria can only survive in gastric acids. So that it's called as certain gastrointestinal bacteria. And here we have a specific bacterial population which has been distributed in an oral cavity. So one can study that uh, variations, lots of variations can be seen like in different kinds of an samples. So like ant uh, nerves, uh, buccal mucus, supra, supra gingival plague, so tongue dorsum and stool samples and posterior formula. So these are the comparison level at phylum level, we are going to compare 
what are the bacterial population which has been seen in different area so this is how we are going to interpret the results of our microbiome research so now apart from this apart from a human being we have and different kinds of species so whose microbiome can also be uh, study uh, whose microbiome study can also help to make those organisms to be healthy say for an example if you want to study an uh, condition of an plant so how this plant has been affected and why what is the microbial population which has been helping the plant to fight against some specific diseases or fight against some specific insects or how an uh, organism uh, animals has been surviving or what is a microbial comp composition which has been seen in the soil so like this this area will be called as of an environmental microbiology so where we are going to study what is the composition of each and every organism so simply saying it's called as of an microbial ecology so which deals with an interaction of microorganisms within the environment and this all together we are going to call it as of an metagenomic study is ident uh, isolating the genomes uh, of the specific bacteria and we are going to study the interaction with a specific host and all together this area will be called as of an metagenomics so we can study the metagenomics irrelevant of any area so even we can study the metagenomics of space soil water or any tissues so here uh, we are going to collect the samples and those samples will be uh, used for an uh, amplifying uh, the 16s rrna sequencing and then those will be sequenced and we are going to analyze that so in later slides we are going to see how we are going to deal with this research so it simply says that studying a whole composition of a microbial community in a specific habitat and these are the terms which we should remember when we are going for when we study and metagenomics so like we are going to study an ecology genomics and genetics of specific bacteria and if you are going to study it for an individual so individual bacteria in a specific ecology then what is what will what we can interpret is its physiology so so differential gene expression in response to change say for an example if i am going to study a specific organism in an stress condition and normal condition so here i am going to say that what are all the genes which has been expressed in this specific bacteria at normal condition and what are the genes which is expressed in stress condition and we are going to study the genomics of that so mapping an individual uh, genomes and then we are going to say that role of uh, genes at various conditions so that area will be called as of in genetics and if you are going to fine tune the whole genome of that organism then it's called as of in genomics and if you are going to uh, study with relevant to an ecology i mean space then it's called as of an ecology and the same bacteria if it has been seen in an group then it's called as of an population so one specific bacteria and group of bacteria it's called as of an population and here it gives you an idea about and demographics of that and population genomics can be studied and population genetics whereas in the next case we are going to see an community of that so here the community deals with uh, ecology so apart from bacteria we are going to use an another we are going to study an another bacteria like fungi or archaea then it will be called as of an community and it's called as of an interspecies interaction so that shapes the community and here we are going to study about an metagenomics so this is what we are going to study meta genomics and we are going to study in community genetics so these are the various terms which we should remember when we are studying for an meta genomics so now coming for the specific terms like meta genomics so if you are going to if you are going uh, genomics then it deals with a single organisms and meta genomics means group of micro organisms and this has been mainly dependent on rna biology so one should be thorough with an rrna sequences of a specific organism so remember that this is a short sequence which will be seen in almost all the bacteria and sequencing for that is of a very low cost and this is seems to be a highly conserved in almost all the bacteria so it can easily differentiate between the species and more and uh, more information can be retrieved from this to identify any bacteria gen genus level so if you look into an 16s rrna sequencing we have an various regions and these are called as an hyper variable regions so we reg we want to v9 variable regions so which it decides that what kind of a bacteria will be 
it can be identified by based upon and various regions. So if you take an prokaryotes, we have an 70s ribosome, which has been made up of 30s and 40s ribosomes, in which we have our 60s RNA in 30s ribosomes, smaller subunits. Whereas in eukaryotes, we have 80s, 40s and 60s subunits. So we can see an ITL sequences in 18s region in 40s subunits. So the 60s is a part of 30s subunit. And what are the advantages of this is we can easily identify an bacterial taxonomic E, and then easy, it's very easy for sequencing. And we have a nine variable regions and we can annotate it at a species level if you're lucky enough. And we can go for a diversity analysis and we can go for a phylogenetic reconstruction. So what kind of an, a sequencing technology can be used to identify a specific bacteria? So if you take this, it says that we have an, uh, nine variable regions and we have an various sequencing technologies. So when we are using an specific 16S RNA sequencing, the one which we are using in traditional way, like 16S RNA sequencing, we are using an two primers, that is an 8F and 1492R. So these are two, these two are called as of an universal primers, which helps you to amplify a sequence of 1500 base pairs. So this is what we are going to amplify in our traditional way. And we are using that specific gene sequence to blast against uh, some uh, databases. And we are going to say that this is a bacteria genus which we have identified. So instead of that here, we are going to make use of the nine hyper variable regions, which differs from one bacteria to, uh, which differs from bacterial community to community. And by using an short sequencing method, short sequencing, uh, methods like high throughput screening technologies, we are going to make use of this variable regions to amplify more number of bacteria. So here we are going to use, if one has been interested in amplifying in V1 to V3 region, so the length of that will be around 510 base pairs and we, we one can use an Roche 454 sequencing machine. So if you are going for an V3, V4 region, so this has been called as of a most variable region, so where we can identify almost 70% of bacterial population from one community. I mean, from one habitat, one can identify almost 70% of bacteria can be identified by amplifying this V3, V4 region. So whose sequencing length will be around 428 base pairs. And by using an Illumina MySeq uh, technology, one can amplify that. So like that, we can amplify V3 to V5 region and V4 regions, V6 to V9 regions. And if you want to amplify the full length, V1 to V9 regions, we can use an PAC bio. So that's called as a specific biosciences sequencing machine, and we can amplify the sequences. So millions of reads can be amplified. And then we are going to group all this, and we are going to separate this, which OTU belongs to which specific genus. So these are the primer sets, which has been used for specific uh, amplification of specific uh, regions. So like VF and 1492, so forward and reverse primers. So if you want to amplify in specific uh, bacteria, so from here to here, so the bacteria, so we can use this two specific primers, or we can use an V3, uh, V3 to V4 primers to amplify and specific regions. So once, we identify, once we sequence this, we are going to classify this bacterial sequence. Uh, we are going to classify this into and different bacterial kingdoms. So like bacteria and archaea, so which can be sequenced by using an 16S RRNA sequencing. In For eukaryotes, we need an 18S RRNA sequencing. So one can, amp one can uh, construct an phylogenetic tree and one can say that these are the bacteria which belongs to specific bacterial population. So this is the taxonomic level of classification. So where we are going to use a taxonomic classification for uh, in 16S and 18S, we cannot get a more accurate information at a species level, but we can reach to a genus level, which can say a 100% accuracy. So uh, here we are going to say that usually uh, when we perform an, a metagenomics approach, we, this, the genus detection will be dependent upon what kind of database which we are going to look for. So we have and various kinds of databases uh, like Green Genes database, Silva database, R, uh, RDP database. So like that we have and various databases. So based upon the search against what kind of database which we are going to 
uh, based on the database, we are going to identify what kind of a bacterial uh, community which we are having. So this is a brief outline of our metagenomic study. So we are going to collect the samples and from the samples, we are going to perform n 16 rRNA sequencing. And once we have n 16 rRNA sequencing, then we are going to study that who are they. So what are the bacteria which has been present in that? So that's called as of a taxonomic classification. So once we make a taxonomic classification, then we are going to perform a population analysis, like saying that what are what is the difference? So like studying an alpha diversity, which says that whether the bacterial species is higher or lower, the diversity is seen high or low, whether the diversity of the bacterial population has increased or decreased, and what is the population between, what is the difference between the two bacterial, uh, two different groups like beta diversity. And we are going to say that which bacterial community is overrepresented or which has been underrepresented. And this is the basic workflow of our metagenomic study and which has been called as of, um, which has been called as of a microbiome study. So here we are going to take an microbial community samples. So which will be having a different kinds of a bacterial population. So we are going to extract the DNA of all those bacterial population and we are going to perform an 16S rRNA sequencing. So once we amplify a 16S rRNA sequencing, we are going to classify that into n different OTUs. So OTUs means this is the these are the reads from specific OTU. OTU here stands for you can consider like one bacterial genus, uh, one bacterial species. So this species will belong to one specific genera again. So now, once we group this similar OTUs. We are going to search against and different kinds of database like green genes, RDP, Silver, NCBI database. And then once we know that to which genera this belongs, we are going to classify that and we are going to say that whose abundance is more. So we can say here that this genus abundance is very high. So it says that specific genus has been seen very high in this sample. And this specific genus is seen to be very low in the sample. And once we get this, we can even go for an SNP analysis, like saying that why this bacterial community has been changed. So here, shotgun sequencing approach. So here we are going to identify, we are going to amplify the sequence and we are going to study in which metabolic role this specific bacteria has been involved in. So we are going to say that what is the role of those specific bacterial population which has been seen in this specific sample. And we are going to delineate that why this community has been, why this has been causing disease or why it has been seems to be healthy. So we are going to decide the functions. So this is the basic workflow of our human metagenomics. So when we come for a population analysis, we need to know that what is the diversity. So we, we, we are going to call it as of an alpha diversity and beta diversity. So where alpha diversity deals within a sample and beta diversity between the samples. And we are going to draw an PCO analysis like principal component analysis or coordinate analysis. And we are going to say that and non-metric dimensional scaling. So it says that how far the two samples looks like each other. So how whether the individuals with a healthy individual and a diseased individual looks to be same. The microbial comp composition, whether it is same or whether it has been divergent. So those analysis can be done. Say for example, when we call an alpha diversity, so here we are, it, it deals with an, within the sample diversity. So here it shows that if you look into these two communities, like community one and community two, here you can see here in this community, we have four species of uh, plants, four bacterial species. So each are distributed equal in number, one, two, three, four, five in number. So each are distributed five in number. So here the community distribution is equal. Whereas in this second community, if you look here, we have same four species, but the distribution of the species is different. So it says that the population of this A has been increased here, right? And the population of B and C is seems to be decreased. So it says that how evenly the samples has been distributed and how evenly the samples are not distributed. So it shows that how many different species. So we are having four different species here to have a four different species. So we can say that these two samples are same in richness. So number of species, number of species, number of different species. So we have four here, here too we have four. So 
we can say that these two samples are same having same richness whereas how evenly they are distributed so here the distribution is very even here there is less even evenness so the evenness is very less here here the evenness is same is good so this is the comparison of alpha and beta so coming for beta diversity so here we are going to compare four different samples and we are going to say that a and b have higher beta diversity so where the number of diversity so here you can see here we have colors of the different uh, uh, organisms so you can see here we have green um, yellow pink purple and red so here we have purple green white yellow and extra additional here so here we have very simple diversity so we are going to compare the diversity between the groups and we are going to make it into an visualization this uh, data will be made into a uh, table and where we are going to call it as of an uh, contingency table and these are the features so we are going to sample we are going to make it as of an uh, table like sample a sample b sample c and sample d and in that we are going to count how many green bugs are there so i am going to say that in sample a i have three green bugs in sample b i don't have any green bugs in sample c again i have n three green bugs and sample d i have only two green bugs so like this we are going to define each and every futures and we are going to make an otu table and we are going to find out what is the distance so this is called as of in beta diversity so where we are going to measure what is the distance between each and every sample community so from sample a to sample b so you can see here the distance between sample a and sample b so like 3 and 0 so it is of 3.6 so based upon the sample each and every otu which has been present in that we are going to differentiate the distance between a and b so the distance between a and b is of 3.6 and the distance between b and c is of 5.9 so it is saying that there is large difference between b and c whereas the difference between a and b is closely similar so you can see here that so like 3 2 2 we have 5 and we have 6 here we have 4 here so there will be an large uh, difference between these two whereas if you see the difference between a and c it's very less so like that one can calculate a, a difference between that so it can be increased as many of species has been increasing and this study is been called as of an taxonomic profiling and structure so once we get an 16 amplicon sequencing from meta genome so say consider that these are the samples and we are going to extract and uh, purify DNA and we are going to amplify and 6 RNA sequencing and then we are going to identify the taxonomic classification and the relative abundance of that can be placed shown like this or we are going to use this OTUs to identify against and various databases and we are going to identify what is the function of each and every bacteria by using and different tools like PCRES, tax for fun and we Kodak. So these are the various tools which helps us to identify what is the function of each and every bacteria. And it is going to say that the potential functions can be identified and what is the role of each and every bacteria. So this is an example of a human microbiome study. So where we are going to compare and two individuals. So one is of a healthy individual. So we are going to isolate all the bacterial population and we are going to perform an high throughput screening and we are going to analyze that with which bacterial population has been increased or which whose population has been decreased or there is no change in that bacterial population in the same way we are going to study an microbial population of an cancer individual and we are going to decide that what we are going to take in uh, samples and then we are going to plot it against with an healthy individual and then we can identify that which bacteria are very essential and which bacteria are very uh, highly seen in uh, cancer condition which are highly seen in healthy condition so we are going to take those bacteria which is whose abundance is very high in an healthy individual and that bacteria will be provided as of a diet or as of a probiotics <coughs> or an antibiotics to bring back the health condition of an healthy of a cancer patient so this and one of an application of our meta genomics understanding and meta genomics so this of a study case study which has been published in nature reviews so they have decided they have uh, conducted and study 
on an healthy individuals and an uh, cardiovascular diseased individuals so the samples has been taken shotgun through and shotgun sequencing the metagenome approach and with an clinical trials data so they have identified what are all the bacteria and what are the metabolic pathways which has been changed when an person is having an cardiovascular disease and what is the community structure so what are the bacteria which has been playing a key key role when an person is having an cardiovascular disease whereas in an healthy individual so the study they conducted the same study and they have identified what are the metabolic pathways which has been regulated so once we gave this particular data so we can we can compare this uh, microbiome with a different microbiome of different diseases so when a person is having cirrhosis what is the microbiome composition so when a person is having a diabetes so obesity so what is the microbiome composition of obesity so what is the composition of type 2 diabetes and what is the composition of rheumatoid arthritis so like that we are going to compare the microbiome and we are going to compare that uh, microbiome composition with another disease so that we can arrive to a specific uh, conclusion that so which bacterial population is been help helpful in regulating this pathway in cardiovascular disease or what is the association between the cardiovascular disease and obesity what is the association between cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes mellitus or we can simply study what is the association between each and every diseases so each and every microbiome study is having its significance those we are going to define that what is the role of each and every bacteria in uh, in in the disease progn in the disease uh, upregulation so we are going to study all those things and that's called as of a microbiome of specific diseases so once we know that we can design and drugs so consider that this is an healthy microbiome so we when an healthy individual when an individual seems to be very healthy and fit we can see here we have a very large diversity of bacteria so as soon as when he was triggered to uh, triggered to some pathogenic bacteria so consider that one pathogenic bacteria has been arriving and it has been making the person to an uh health uh, an affected affected person so he is developing some disease so in the disease state you can see here the population of this pathogen has been increased and the normal bacterial diversity has been decreased so the loss of diversity and functionality has been decreased so to restore that functions we are going to use a drug or a, it's called as of an ecobiotic drug so which has been made up of an healthy in microbiome so those drugs will be given in the in form of an probiotics and then again the person can become healthy so we are going to reintroduce an healthy microbiome into an individual so that the individual can restore his health back again so this of an uh, analysis which has been given as of an output and we have and different compositions for that and now these days the research is more focused on this fecal microbiota transplantation so this is one of an improving area so where they are collecting and fecal samples from an healthy individuals who is not having any kind of diseases so from them the fecal microbiota has been collected and those fecal microbiota composition has been considered as of an capsules and those has been given to an diseased individual to improve his health status apart from prebiotics probiotics and postbiotics this fecal microbiota transplantation is very uh, very much gaining an interest in this area and and diversity of an healthy individual can be a di diversity of an individual can be increased and he can brought back to his normal healthy condition so if you look into an human microbiome so what we know till date is like we we the we are we can say that we have n25 different phyla and 2000 genera has been seen 5000 species and 80% of meta genome has been map, mapped and we have almost 316 million genes but we still we don't know that we are having almost they are saying that 20% of sequence are not matching to any microbial genomes and 40% of genes are not finding to any functional databases so it says that still many if any functions has to be identified from this bacterial population so that's about 
the talk. So it says that without microbiomes, we cannot live and each and every individual is having their own unique microbiome. So taking care of our uh, diet will make an individual to be very healthy. So this is a fun study. So metagenomics, which can be performed by using a different kinds of tools like Chime. One can perform a uh, metagenomics research and one can say that how a specific bacteria has been interacting with its host to make it healthy or to make it into a disease state. So this is all about my talk. So now I can take questions if you have any doubts. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful presentation, sir. I request the participant to post their queries in the comment section. Uh, there is a question from the, yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, participant Punitavati, Dr. V. R. Punitavati has asked a question, sir. Is there any particular bacterial species which play a major role in obesity? Yeah, we uh, actually we, we didn't we we didn't perform any kind of uh, research on human microbiome, but uh, we have and many bacterial species which is said to be playing a major role in obesity. There are many groups who has been working on that. We have a project called as of an uh, uh, American Gut Human Microbiome Project. So their role is to say all this, what are the bacteria which has been associated with what kind of diseases. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Charanya has asked that, could you suggest any bioinformatics tool kit website for metagenome analysis, sir? Pardon? Can you suggest any bioinformatics tool kit website for metagenome analysis? For metagenome analysis, one can, uh, you should first have an uh, OTU table. So that OTU table can be constructed by using an software like Chime and Mathur. And apart from that, we have an uh, one online based, cloud based one. It's called as of an EZ cloud. EZ, EZ cloud. Uh, does human gut microbiome change with respect to geographical area, sir? Yes, it changes. Okay, sir. Did any research carried out in microbiome of livestock, sir? Pardon? Did any research is carried out in microbiome of livestock? Livestock? Um, any research is going on in microbiome of livestock? This question is asked by Shalini Suresh, assistant professor, sir. Um, I'm not sure about livestock. Like, so we are we are working on uh, a rice plant microbiome. Rice plant. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for the very useful uh, session, sir. Another question. Um, is the fecal microbiota method only for curing the disease, or can it be used for improving immunity, sir? Yeah. Now the research has been going on to increase the immunity too, but especially now the fecal microbiota is given only at the disease state. But research is going on that uh, for increasing the immunity. Uh, there is a question from the Sir, is genetics of a person affecting the human microbiome, sir? Yeah, definitely it will affect. So can microbes can be stored in our body? Microbes? Uh, microbes is stored in our body or not, sir? Stored? It's in it's already body. there. Yeah, it's it's, there. A, it's a life of our body. It's a part and of what, our body. Uh, and what factors determine affect the human gut microbiome, sir? What factors? What factors determine effect? Yeah, like pH. pH. Gut, gut microbiome is based on pH pH and what are the food we are taking. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, actually you have said that good bacteria and bad bacteria. Bad bacteria yes. can cause disease like NEC and IBD. The yeah. participants wants to know about the full form of NEC and IBD, sir. What does it mean? Which one? NEC and IBD. One second. Mm -hmm. 
This I'm not sure what what kind of a disease is that. Okay, NEC and IBD. IBD. Yeah, okay. I'm not familiar with those uh, disease status. So, uh, whether microbiome is used for treatment, sir? Any clinical study is published? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, fecal microbiota, fecal microbial transplant. So, are there any kind of microbes which can treat obesity, sir? I, I am not sure about obesity, but their uh, research is going on that obesity related uh, fecal transplant microbiota. But they have succeeded in um, for one patient who who was affected with some uh, uh, illness, severe illness, but not with an obesity. Uh, sir, uh, one participant has asked that gut microbiome is linked with autism. Gut microbiome is linked with autism disease. Can you give detail about that, sir? Uh, I am not sure about, but it is related with various diseases, but it is related with autism too. But I am not sure what bacteria has been involved in that because my area of research is not with a human microbiome. Sure. Just to give an gist of a microbiome research and to make participants understand of a microbiome work. So it will be very easy to deal with a human microbiome. So I just presented on this. Is it possible to treat any person only with microbial having uh, diarrheal disease, sir? Microbial person having? having uh, diarrheal disease can be cured with only microbiome. Diarrhea? Diarrheal disease. Diarrheal disease. Yes, sir. Uh, I am not sure. I, I couldn't get the question actually. Diarrheal disease. Maybe he, he one should one means that it's a diarrhea. If it is diarrhea, if they are if the question is like diarrhea, yes, that can be treated by using an lactobacillus. Uh, so in a disease condition, sir, how the healthy gut microbiome is changing, sir? How in the healthy disease? gut microbiome changes in diseases? See, for example, if a person is having a specific disease, say for an example, in a healthy individual, we have an five different bacterial species. In case of disease individual, one bacterial species may be lost. Like we, he might be having only four bacterial species or he might be having only three bacterial species. Or instead of five, maybe seven bacterial species will be increased. So one extra bacterial species will be coming in. So which is going to play a role and it is going to cause a certain type of disease. So there will be a change in the diversity of the bacterial population. Okay. Uh, what kind of universal primer are used to amplify microbes, sir? <laughs> what kind of primer? Universal primer. It's an universal primers. So forward and reverse universal primers of full length. Um, can microbes be treated for hormonal imbalance, sir? Microbes can be used as a treatment for hormonal imbalance. I am I am not sure about hormonal imbalance. Uh, specific bacteria which is involved for dysentery for six month baby, sir. Six months baby, I think it's it should be an enterobacteriaceae. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. One more question. Yeah. Can you mention uh, name of the primer used, sir? Name of the primer? Use. Primer tools? No, sir. Used. Primers used? Used for what? Uh, uh, mention the name of the primer which is used to amplify primers, sir. Primers Ampli used to amplify the primers? Microbes, sir. 
so this is the primer list which we can use for what are the bacteria you want to amplify so this is the region which they want to amplify say for an example if one has to amplify an v3 v4 region so they need to use an primer of 337 forward and 805 reverse so this is the sequence of 335 forward and 805 reverse so this is the primer sequence Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for wonderful presentation and clearing the doubts of our participants, sir. It's very enthusiastic of you. Thank you. Nothing thank is more honorable than a grateful heart. I request. I would like to invite Ms. P. Amuda Nila, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, to deliver the vote of thanks. Please, ma'am. Morning, or one and all present. Showing gratitude is one of the simplest, yet most powerful things human can do for each other. It is a great honor and privilege for me to prepare, perform a vote of thanks on this wonderful occasion. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to uh, thank Almighty for showering His endless blessing over us. My heartfelt thanks to our management. For giving permission to conduct this international webinar. I thank our dynamic and energetic principal, Dr. T. Balasubramanian Sir, NKJC, for his support uh, for this international webinar. Thank you, Sir. Now I extend my thank to Vice Principal, Dr. M. Indavalli, Ma'am, NKJC. Thank you, Ma'am. To be inspired is great, but to be an inspiration is an honor. I thank our resource person, Dr. T. Nyanendra Shanmugam, uh, Assistant Professor, International Research uh, Professor, Yangnam University, South Korea. Thank you, sir. I thank our PRO ma'am, uh, B. Shaktimala ma'am, and various heads of the department and faculty. My special thanks to Dr. M. Gomati, Head Department of Biotechnology, and R. Malakodi, Head Department of Biochemistry. And I, I extend my thanks to both biotech and biochemistry faculty members for the valuable support. Thank you, ma'am. And I also thank participants of various colleges and universities for make, making this program a great success. I thank Sudhaga sir and team for the electric and technical support. Thank you, sir. Once again, I thank you all of your attention. Thank you all. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. With the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Hope to see you all again in the next webinar, inshallah. Thank you once again for making this webinar a grand success. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.